Well, I'm not sure this one's gonna stay on. It's super thick. It's kind of like, you remember when we made Jello Jigglers? It's kind of like that. <laughs> uh, but it, it don't want stick on this one side, and I don't know if that's gonna cause the whole thing to fall off. Uh, and it keeps falling down in my mouth, so I can't talk. So we'll see how long this one lasts because it's totally not sticking. It's weird. It's um, got it at, oh, I just made a big mess. It's really goofy. Um, I got it at Dollar Tree. Poor refining mass, but it's so thick. Well, it won't stick to my face, so what good does it do? <laughs> if it won't stay on your face, it's not going to do much good. Well, I thought, oh, here it goes again. going to fight with this the whole time, I got a feeling. It's probably one of those you kind you got to just lay back and do, you know, relax. Don't talk. <laughs> I'm going to tear this. Try and tear it. So my... I can, my mouth can talk. <laughs> I don't know, this one, I don't think this one's gonna stay. <laughs> we'll see. So I thought I would read you a little more out of my um, weight loss file study. I'm doing called first place is the this one, it's a better way, and the whole, this whole Bible, this whole particular Bible study is talking about how, you know, how in Superman there was Bizarro World. Well, Jesus's way is like opposite world. He wants us to be the opposite of the way the rest of the world is. Oh, now it's sliding down in my eyes. <laughs> I don't know about this mess, Mindy. So this week is on servanthood. So there's this one little couple cha chapters, couple paragraphs I'm gonna read you. It says, imagine how the disciples reacted. Okay, I give up. <laughs> there's still a little goop on, I'll just leave the goop on. Imagine how the disciples reacted to the radical idea, you serve to become great. This contact, contact, concept, I'll get it right, concept was the exact opposite of how Jewish leaders lived, lived. It was against human nature. It was likely not what they signed up for when they chose to follow Jesus. I mean, most Jews thought the Messiah was going to come back like as a king and a warrior and all that kind of stuff. So political and, and military. Um, let's see, they may have thought some of the glory of the Messiah would rub off on them, but that's not what Jesus taught or modeled for them. God's better way was to focus on sacrificial servanthood, not personal profit. Even the great, greatness we may obtain from servanthood, like Mother Teresa, for instance, she became famous, but yeah. Even even though we may, the greatest we may gain from servanthood is not about what we accomplish. Our works for God are only great because he is in, in it. Only through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives do we learn to make healthy choices. And one of the healthiest choices we can make is to humbly serve God through ministering to others, just as Jesus did with humility and an obedient heart. How important is service to, in God's kingdom? The, the word serve appears over 300 times in his word. Jesus and his mission was to seek and save the lost. That's Luke 19.10. His mission and motivation was not to become great, yet through his servant walk he attained greatness. He calls for us to this, he calls us to the same lifestyle. We, we do not seek to become fit and thin in order to be praised for our exceptional excellence and better body. We seek fitness so that we can serve him as long as and as well as we can. And then I'd ask this question, how does the concept of servanthood 
impact your desire to make healthy choices with food and exercise. But that's, you know, that should be why we want to be thin for our health and so we can be around and uh, be able to serve others. Like Kay's like, I think she's 66, so she's eight years younger than me, but she's way more energetic and able to serve and stuff because she's thin <laughs> and healthy. So. So this plan, it used to be, it's kind of like the diabetic, ex, old diabetic exchange plan. Remember that? It's got here, I'll read it to you, but it's got like the calories you want to stay in and how much you eat in different categories. So for me, I think I should stay in 15 to 1600 calories a day. So that, what that equates out to is one and a half to two cups of fruit, two to two and a half cups of vegetables, five to six servings of grain, oh, six ounces or equivalent, five to six ounces or equivalent. So like one piece of bread's one serving or whatever. So uh, dairy, three cups, I don't get that. So I fudge and put a little extra grain or protein because I don't do dairy. Um, protein, five ounces. That's not very much for your whole day. So I'll usually take some of my dairy because they're both protein basically. So I'll take my dairy, some of my dairy calories and put them on the protein. Um, healthy oils and other fats, five teaspoons. Um, water, and other beverages. Uh, women should have nine cups, men 13 cups. And then it's got here, it's got a thing and you just do check, checking marks of, you know, how you did. And then there's like this plus another page of what you ate that day. So it's, it's like old school keeping track. I mean, you can do it on an app, like Lose It or um, what's the other one, Fitness Pal. And it's it's very similar. You can you can do it on there, but they more focus on calories, and this more focuses on eaches. You know, like each each serving of vegetables or each serving of fruit. And since I've been doing it, oh, let's see. This is my second book. Let's see, it's in the back. I'm keeping track. Um, I did another Bible study before this one. I might even have done two Bible studies before this one. I think I started this in July, so I lose super slow. My, oh, where's this weight thing, weight tracker thing? It's in here somewhere. In the back, they've got different little forms and things. Oh, here we go. So, this particular one that I started like four weeks ago, I, the original one I started back, the one before this one, I was around 237 and I started this one at 230.6. So I lost, what, about seven pounds. And I think this is, how many weeks are these? Uh, nine week study. I think the other one was nine weeks too. So I lost seven pounds in nine weeks. So hmm, three quarters of a pound a week. I lose pretty slow. So this time I went from 230 to 229 the first week. So I lost three pounds. And then I went down to 227. Or two, 20, yeah, so I lost a couple more pounds. And then I didn't write down for a couple weeks, but I know I gained back, I must've been water weight, because I gained back like six pounds or something. I got up to like 233, which was more than I started this particular study with. Now last week I went back down to 230, so I was kind of where I started. <laughs> and then so far this, oh, oh no, that was week before last. And then last week I was down to 228. So now I'm back in the, going the right direction. And then 
I'm hoping by the end of this week I weigh on Thursdays. Maybe I'll be back to this 227.2 that was my low. <laughs> so I stayed at that 227 for a minute and a half and then bounced right back up. So I've lost in, I think this is the fourth week and I've lost three-ish pounds, depending on what I end up losing the rest of this week. So maybe four pounds, so around the same, around between three quarters and a pound a week. But, you know, when I'll be 74 next month, so when you're 74, your metabolism's, well, my metabolism's always been, but when you're 74, your metabolism's really bad. I went out to lunch with friends today and I was gonna get, but I got tempted the evil temptations, it wasn't too bad. I was going to get, uh, they have a salmon, it's four ounces of salmon, mashed potatoes, and some kind of mixed veggie thing. And that's usually what I get when I go there, but they have a new menu and they had this. It was a baked potato with chopped up brisket with barbecue sauce on it, and that's such a Texas thing. And then they had some onions and pickled jalapenos. And I just couldn't resist, so I got that. And I didn't eat, I maybe only ate half of the potato. I ate the meat and the jalapenos and stuff, you know, down till they were gone and then left the bottom half of the potato. So I probably didn't eat too bad. And that was, I didn't have breakfast, and so then I had that for lunch. And then whatever I end up having for dinner. So not too bad a day, just no, no fruits and no vegetables so far today. That's that's always the challenge for me is to get enough fruits and vegetables in. I did make this, I'll have to, maybe I'll take a picture of the recipe sometime and show it to you because there's a recipe in this book. Maybe I can just show it to you and you can copy it. And I changed it a bunch because the way I make it makes it taste better and hold together better. It's like a food, it's called fruity baked oatmeal. And they had put, chopped apples in it and it just crumbled all apart so i put applesauce instead for instance and they put like a third of a cup of peaches and a third of a cup of blueberries and i'm like that's not enough fruit so i put a half a cup of each and it makes nine servings of these they're about this big and you know maybe two inch square or two inch it's like cube almost and i add that for like breakfast or snacks so if you want to pause and copy this, here's this part. And here's the directions. It tells you to, well, and I use Swerve, so I cut down the calories I did instead of sugar. Um, it tells you to bake it for 30 to 40 minutes, but because of the applesauce, I ended up having to bake it for like an hour <laughs> to get it to be done and not be gushy. But I've been eating that lately as, it, you know, it's a, it's a little sweet, but it's got a little bit of sweet from the swerve and then, of course, sweet from the fruit. So it's a nice little breakfast or I don't eat breakfast a lot of times, but I'll have a late morning 11 o'clock or something. But a lot of times I just won't eat breakfast. I know I'm practically intermittent fasting because I don't eat breakfast. And I'm trying not to snack at night anymore because I was really bad at snacking at night all the time. So I'm trying to cut that out. But my doctor, my, my um, gastro guy, he wants me to do the exact opposite. Eat six small meals a day instead of me eating one or two big meals a day. But it's just, I'm just not hungry in the mornings. And I'm not a real snacker. I don't snack during the day very often. Once in a while in the afternoon, I'll have a little pick-me-up. But um, usually my guilty snacking time is, because I eat dinner at like, say, 5.30 or 6. But I'm a late stay-upper person, and I won't go to bed till like 12 or 1. And by then it's like five, six hours, I'm hungry again. <laughs> so I'll end up having a snack. But um, I've been trying to cut that out. Or if I do, I bought the, some of those Outshine uh, lime juice, um, like popsicle-y things. <clears throat> and they're just straight juice, there's no sugar added. 
and they're like 60 calories or something. So that's not, if you're gonna have a snack, that's not too bad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my, I've got a lightweight turtle comforter that's on my bed for the summer, but I'm gonna take it off and put my gray one with the white flowers orientally looking one back on because it's a lot thicker. Cause it got down to 40 last night or 45 and I was like worried about Kit being out there in that cold. But he's a double coated dog, so I'm sure he was fine, but I worry about him anyway. That's partly why I haven't been sleeping very well. I actually took a nap today. I never take naps in the daytime. But like last night, I think I finally fell asleep about 3.30 for a little while, and then I woke up at 8 or 7.30, so four hours sleep maybe. I just worry about him, especially at night, so I'm having trouble sleeping. But, you know, God's got him. I just got to quit worrying and keep him, keep giving him over into God's hands. And after church yesterday, I was just like, okay, I got to turn him over to God and quit trying to handle it all myself. So um, on the way home from church, I sang, Jesus is my living hope. And then it wasn't an hour later that I got the text about somebody spotted him. So he's just trying to still give me hope. <laughs> Anyway, that is it for my failed Mass Monday. It, whatever that goop was, it all soaked in, but it sure didn't stay on me. I guess if I ever do that one again, I can't do it for Mass Monday. I'll have to do it for like lay in bed mask time because it's just <laughs> slid right off. It's so thick. See if I can show you how thick it is. If you can see, see how thick that is? I think that's why it wouldn't stay on because it's just so thick and heavy. And do you remember Jello Jigglers? What I was talking about? You make Jello, but you use like way less water, and it ends up these little cubes of jiggly Jello that you'd give your kids as snacks. And you could cut them out with cookie cutters and make dinosaurs or whatever out of them. <laughs> do you remember doing that back in the day? So I don't know what else is coming this week. I know for sure I will do another frugal Friday, but I don't know what else. Today's Monday, so that's a big gap between Monday and Friday. So I'll probably put something else, try and put something else in the middle there. Um, I finally was able to give away um, the uh, five-year anniversary gift. It took three tries to do it, but I finally did. Pinky Jean won, and if you haven't ever watched Pinky Jean, go watch her. She's awesome. And um, I'm only eight away from my 800 subscriber, so once I get to that, we'll have another giveaway. I might go... I don't know if I'll, because I'm on my no spin. See, that that's what part of what makes it difficult with uh, content is because from the October 15th to November 15th, I'm on a no spend month. So I can't like go do hauls or anything. What I might do is go look around Hobby Lobby and look at their fall stuff for you. Just film it but not buy anything. How do you, you think you'd like that? Or I might go to like Walmart and look at their fall clothes and not buy any. <laughs> A few little things like that, if those interest you. So they'd be um, just, or there's a home goods near me. We could go explore home goods. So I'm willing to do some of those kind of things where you just go film in a store and explore the store, but just not buy anything. <laughs> uh, just, just resist that temptation and don't, don't buy anything. I am going to have to probably buy a few little groceries in there here and there. And I was able to pay this month's bills before the fifteenth, but then I'll have to do the same thing next month. So I'm still, but my my windows that I have. You know, I re did window, re full window replacement, so I've not got now, <laughs> easy for me to say, I've now got dual pane windows with the argon gas in them, 
my electric bill because the it's, there's a few days in this cycle that were still hot enough where I had the AC on, but I turned the AC off and I haven't turned the heater on yet. So next month I'll be even better if I don't have to turn the heat on, but my, my house is all electric, so no gas, just all my, everything comes through electricity, heat and appliances and all that light and all that. Um, my bill was only $86, which that's really cheap. And I found this service, I don't know if they have it where you live, but it's a federal program, so they might. I was able to apply for this federal program because I'm old and poor. <laughs> and I was able to cut, I think it was 30 or $35 off of my internet bill. So it went down from, maybe it was 25 I think, it, I think it went down from 65 to 35 So yeah, it was $35. I was able to cut off my internet bill. So you just gotta look around for stuff like that and that, that helps a lot. And they do have food pantries, but I don't know what that consists of, whether you have to, you know, have certain incomes or whatever. I do have a low income, but I also have a lot of money in the bank in my savings. So I really can't justify getting like I looked into food stamps and down at the bottom it's like you could go to jail for lying on this and I wouldn't have been lying if I only gave them the one bank account but I have a IRA and another savings account that have money in it so I really felt like it wasn't justified to get food stamps. I might be able to justify it to get money, uh, food from the uh, food banks occasionally but I definitely don't feel like I should be using taxpayer money to get food when I've got money in my savings. I just don't want to spend it, which is stupid. I mean, that's what you saved it for all those years to have it in your retirement, especially my 401k. I don't know why I'm so resistant in using that. <laughs> anyway, enough rambling. It's been 22 minutes and I haven't even done any masking. <laughs> well, a little bit. It does feel, I mean, my skin feels a little softer the little, what, two minutes I had it on. So I guess if you had it on the whole uh, 20 minutes or whatever it is, it probably would help. But I just couldn't, couldn't do, couldn't make it work upright. <laughs> Alrighty, love y'all. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.